Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Some Swing Picks with myself and Breakout Plays. Today is Sunday, April 30th. So before I get into the picks for the week, I just want to talk about, first of all, what to expect this week. We still have a lot of earnings on tap. We have Apple and Play, AMD, look forward to Lisa Sue. We have Coin, CVS Pharmacy, DraftKings, another one that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Etsy is another interesting one to keep a watch on. Uh, QCOM, Pfizer, Starbucks, Shopify, uh, Square. Look, I'm really looking forward to Square too. Uh, so really exciting week with the earnings and love to have had some of these uh, stocks on watch for a swing trade, but really need to get these earnings out of the way and get the guidance information before we can actually consider going long-term on these stocks. So, but some potential good growth stocks in the pipeline. So we also have on Monday, PMI manufacturing, ISM manufacturing, Tuesday, you could see here Federal Reserve meetings begin. And then we have FOMC on Wednesday. So be ready for some volatility in the market. Could go either way. So just be ready regardless. And then we have jobless claims Thursday, China PMI composite and the employment and consumer credit report. And then Fed speaker bullet also on Friday. We have also a couple uh, shareholder meetings here. Uh, along the, on the right hand side here, you could take a look here, you could pause the video, you can actually see who they are. So definitely some things going on. We also have here Fed speaker schedule as well. Let's see here, FOMC, and then we just got the ones in red, Lisa Cook on Friday and James Bullard. So really look forward to really what everyone's really waiting for is market direction. What is going to happen with the rates? Are they going to pause? They're going to do one more rate increase. Remains to be seen. I'd love to see that they stop it and market just continues and goes. But of course, I'm a bull. So of course, I want that. But at the end of the day, how does the market react regardless what the news is? So let's see what the market's going to do. Just be ready to take um, monitor what you're trading and watch your trading size. You know, going into the FOMC event, a lot of traders sometimes will go very light and then they'll adjust when the news comes out. They'll either add or, you know, manage the trade. So let's see what the market's going to do. The other thing to uh, to watch here, um, we have here uh, headlines for tomorrow. This is the schedule for tomorrow. You can take a look here and see that we don't have much going on. Construction spending coming at 10 and seeing a lot of action actually in home builders. So keep a watch on in that sector. So moving on to my pick for the week, I'm actually going to talk about Visa. This is the Visa chart. Let me just add that to the screen because I'm not even sharing it right now. Um, hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. So here's the Visa chart, really liking the price action. And I want to talk about, you know, Visa's earnings, okay, because they had a great earnings report. And uh, just going to show you here um, on Visa. And uh, one of the things that they talked about here on the Visa report that was really instrumental to the actual stock is this could become, in my opinion, like a leader in the fintech space. And, um, you know, Visa did report their second quarter results on April 25. So that was just a few days ago. And the revenue was $8 billion, which was 8% higher than a year earlier and $200 million better than what the analyst estimate was. So on the bottom line, the net income is $4.3 billion, was up 17% year over year, good for a 54% net margin. I mean, honestly, that is just insane. That must mean people are still spending money. And also, uh, for comparison, because everyone always likes to talk about Apple and, and Microsoft, but if you compare Visa, okay, Apple is less than one half of that. So that is just incredible. And the CEO, Ryan McKerney, said in his press release that while there is macroeconomic uncertainty, he feels confident in Visa's ability to manage through a changing environment. And he also said that... Um, visas uh, in their analyst conference that the real-time payment system will be introduced to by the federal reserve in july that'll be something interesting and there'll be some, it'll be a, a very significant update and by the way this is going to be modernizing the payment infrastructure in the us as which is they're saying a smart thing to do so uh keep a watch on that we have that coming up in july i'm sure we'll hear more about that information. So in the meantime, what I want to show you here as well, uh, with regards to um, Visa in particular, because I want to show you that there has been money flowing because you guys know I love to follow the money. So I want to show you what is happening with Visa's money flow. And this is why it is my pick of the week. Okay. So with Visa in particular, you could see here that there has been some dark pool activity. 
And I want to show you here, uh, you know, on the 26th of April. So this is obviously after earnings. Um, there's a, you know, trade here to uh, 319,000. But look at the money, like 73 million, 58 million. This is just a little bit before earnings. Um, but there has been some interesting flow uh, coming through on Visa. And I like this sweeper here for Gen 2025. Look at this target looking pretty good. This is probably pretty, pretty much in the money. But uh, big sweeper. And I want you to watch Visa in particular, the level that I'm watching for this to break. I want this to break 236. Okay. So if it does break 236, that is the resistance on Visa. So if it breaks 236, then I'm looking for this to head towards 250. And stop loss would be under 230, which would be about here. Okay. Probably the base of this candle right here. So if don't want to see it going below this level here. But I definitely want to see it get over 236. So if it can do that, then I think we could see a nice move on Visa. And of course, it had phenomenal earnings and there's money flow. So what is there not to like about it? So let's see what the market's going to do. Just quickly want to um, show you some other catalysts here this week in the market. On Tuesday, uh, obviously, we have Starbucks reporting. I went through all that earlier. But we also have the HC Wainwright BioConnect Investors Conference which will include CBay, okay? Some of you have swing uh, stocks on CBay. And uh, we also have Iron, ASXX, and JanX. We also have ALLE, Allegiant. And then we have some more earnings Wednesday. As we know, we have an all-day conference, the Canadian National Railway Investors Event in Chicago. And then we also have the Wall Street Journal, the Future of Everything Conference. They're going to have Ford's going to be there, the CRM CEO, Lydian Jones, and Hilton CEO, Christopher Nasetta. Now, one thing is also CRM. Oh, my God. Definitely have to watch this one. Uh, Want to see what this one's going to do. I'm going to be watching this one as well for a break over $200. So definitely watch CRM this week, too, especially if they say anything positive at this conference. There could be some fireworks in that stock. So keep a watch on it. So don't forget, Wednesday, FOMC will release a statement on the interest rate hike. But the other thing too is that uh, we have Jerome Powell speaking at 2.30. A lot of times you might see initial pop and then later on could be a drop or initial drop and then a pop. So we really have to hear what is he going to say that will actually make it uh, confirm the direction of the market. So let's take a look. Thursday will be very exciting. We have Apple reporting, DraftKings reporting. Oh my God, I'm so excited this week um, and want to see what's going to happen in the market. So stay tuned. Look forward to talking to you guys next week. So again, my play for the week is Visa, uh, bullish over 236, target of 250, bearish under 230. And this is also a stock I want you to add on your watch list. It's very important to have a list of growth stocks. And this is going to be on my list. I do not have a position in Visa. I do not have any shares of Visa, full disclosure. However, I like the action on the stock. I like what it's doing for the future. And I like the fact that they made so much money that that is what people want. You know, the growth stock's important to make money and continuously have future growth. So I want to see this continue and looking for this one to be one to watch down the road. So add that to your list and let's take, monitor this stock and see what it does over the next quarter. So have a great weekend, everyone, and look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Breakout Plays, um, who wants to go over his play for Meta. So we'll definitely be doing that. And if you want to check out my service, my link is in my bio. And if not, go to my site at I Love Stocks One. Have a great weekend, everyone, and see you tomorrow. Now I'm going to turn it over to Breakout Plays. Over to you. Okay, Vega. So my play this week, one to watch, is going to be Meta. So I like Meta if we break over 242 with a target of 248 for an intraday play. I mean, I really like this stock going forward, maybe for a swing. I think if we can break an oldest 248, we've got a gap to fill with a target of 289. But for near term play for the coming weeks, I like it over 242 for an intraday play with a target of 248. And as I said, if we break 248 and we can hold over there, I like it with near term targets of 263 and 289. So not only is this viable for an intraday play for the coming week with a potential six point move up, but if we can get that 248 and we can hold over there, we got this gap fill, which we can look at some 
metadated calls pending market direction to see if we can gap fill back up to this 289 area. So it's a strong stock going forward. We've got a, a breakout on multiple time frames, which I like. The only price that I wouldn't be looking at this uh, for any weakness is if we break this 235 area to the downside, pending what the market does this week and going forward. Because I know we've still got some key earnings coming out. So if we do break 235, we've got the potential to gap fill back down on this volume shelf and retest this trend around to about the 225 area. So as long as it stays above 235, I'll be looking at Meta to break 242 with a near term target of 248 for intraday plays. And then if it breaks 248 and it rolls, I'll be looking at this to gap fill over the coming weeks with a target of 289. So that's what I'll be watching this week, guys. Um, let's hope for a good week. Let's hope it goes and we can all make money on it.